Nowadays, it is becoming more and more common to use a service like, for example, Google Pay to, like the name implies, pay for something in a store without using cash. Even I use a contactless payment method with my gyro cards, which I only have to hold in front of a card reader in a store for a couple of seconds to make a payment. But of course, when it comes to money, there will always be safety concerns. So in this video, let's learn a bit about RFID and NFC, which are the technologies used for contactless payments. And at the end, let's determine how safe this payment method truly is and whether it makes sense to use the RFID and NFC technology in our own simple Arduino projects. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who manufacture 10 PCBs with dimensions of up to 10 by 10 cm for just $2. Their boards offer good quality and feature 24 hour fast turnaround. And best of all, their batch PCBs are cheaper than from most other PCB companies. When we search for RFID Reader Arduino on eBay, we get quite a big selection of boards to choose from but they boil down to three popular ICs. Those are the RDM6300, the PN532 and finally the RC522. To not miss out on anything, I ordered all three of them, which luckily all came with either an RFID tag or card. But how do we use them? To find that out, I hooked up the RC522 board to an Arduino Uno development board, according to the wiring scheme which was presented in the dump info sketch of the RC522 Arduino library. As soon as the connections were established and the example code was uploaded, I opened up the serial monitor, who after bringing the tag close to the board, spat out a whole lot of information. But why did that happen and what does the information mean? Well, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, which means it has to do with wireless communication. When we have a closer look at the PCB of the reader, we can see that it features an antenna, which we can draw simplified as a coil. Now the reader I see, in combination with some passive components, pushes a sinusoidal current through the antenna, which therefore creates a magnetic field around the coil. The most used frequencies are either 13.56 MHz, so HF, which the PN532 or the RC522 uses, and 125 kHz, so LF, which the RDM6300 uses. The tax guts, which we can clearly observe in this transparent housing, consist of an antenna or coil as well, and a small chip, which for example can be the MyFair Classic 1K. When the tax coil enters the magnetic field of the reader, it induces a voltage into it, and thus also a current which powers the IC. This is called wireless energy transfer. And if you have never heard of it, I recommend you to watch my wireless charging video as well as my DIY wireless energy transfer system video. Now the tax IC is powered and as we can see in its datasheet, holds one kilobyte of data that it wants to tell us. But how? To find that out, I formed a loop with my oscilloscope probe's ground wire and had a closer look at the magnetic fields of the reader. As you can see, it truly uses a frequency of 13.56 MHz. And we can also observe that the amplitude of the sine wave changes quite a bit while the reader and tech communicate with one another. The reason is that as soon as the tech IC is properly powered, it uses a built-in transistor to short its coil according to the data it wants to send over. This short circuit secondary current damps the carrier wave current and thus can be observed as slight changes in the amplitudes. And that is how the RFID tech talks with the reader. 
I will not go into detail though what the exact steps of the data exchange are, since there are plenty of tutorials out there that cover this and we do not want to get too technical. What is important is that as soon as an RFID tag gets too close to an RFID reader, it will spit out all of its information, which means it is pretty dumb. But more about that later, because contactless payments does not use RFID, but instead NFC, which stands for Near Field Communication. Only problem is that NFC is a type of RFID. Only difference is that we got more standardized rules, stated in for example ISO 14443, 18092 or 21481. Most importantly though, we only use high frequency, so a distance of a couple of centimeters between reader and tag is mandatory. And you can also use a reader as a tag, to exchange more complex data. But let's take a quick break from NFC and let's go back to the Arduino example. We can use the reader to also write new data to the RFID tag and of course use a part of the tag's data as an identification password to, for example, light up an LED. That means such an Arduino RFID reader and tag is great for projects where you need permission for something to happen which I will keep in mind for future projects. Ok, quick break over. So let's ask the question how easy it actually is to read the data from my gyro cards. No matter what I tried or what kind of code I utilized, the RC522 not recognized my card. And by utilizing the PN532 board, which can handle more kinds of RFID tags, I was also not capable of reading any data. But that does not mean that there is no way to do that, because every modern smartphone nowadays comes with NFC functionality. By installing the NFC tools app, we can for starters scan the previously used tag to see some general information, but also read out its entire memory. Now this time my gyro cards got recognized. And apparently it is an ISO 14443-4 compliant tag. But while trying to read its memory, the app said that this type is not supported yet. The reason is probably that while it is true that RFID tags will send out their data pretty carelessly, that does not mean that it is not encrypted by for example a shared key. Combine that with the fact that a close proximity is mandatory and you mostly got a payment limit, contactless payment is not as dangerous as most people might think. And if you want to be super safe, you can always get yourself an anti-skimming card holder for a couple of bucks. Its metal material damps the radio frequencies and thus lets your cards not interact with an RFID reader. And with that being said, RFID is an important technology, which for example allows me to own a card that opens my YouTube channel if I bring it close to my smartphone. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.